Hello, and welcome to A Place to Call Home. It's our weekly series where we talk about everything. Today we're talking about Ladies Night, and my very special guest live in studio with me today, Rachel Sisters and Miss Rachel Leopold, Miss Debrika Handy. We are here to talk about an upcoming women's conference, the ICU Women's Conference that's going to be coming up. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. It's always good to have the girls in the house. And uh, Rachel, this is uh, your baby, and I want to know where this vision comes from. Okay. Rachel's sister started in a house about six to seven years ago. And every other Friday night, we'd gather at our girlfriend Crystal's house, and we vent we pray, we laugh, we eat spiritually and naturally. And we always prayed uh, that one special prayer was, can we be a blessing so that we can bless others? And out of that, four of us are married, one left to get married. We have the Brika who wrote a book. We have Crystal who has her own business. I am starting my ministry and Demetra has a ministry as well. So out of the women's night that we had, I'm an only child, so I always said I wanted sisters. They became my sisters. Wonderful. And now we're bringing it uh, public. It's going to be a kingdom ladies' night, yes, and uh, this is uh, up and coming. Uh, this is going to be happening this coming Saturday, October 10th. It's going on at the Progressive Community Center. Yes, and uh, what shall we look forward to? You can look for a night of encouraging, equipping, and empowering. We're going to have Ms. Debrika that's going to give a segment of her book. We're going to have one to give away. There's going to be a lot of door prizes, liturgical dance, and the world. I heard you dance the other day. Yes, ma'am. And what what what'd you dance to? Jamal Bryant, God Make It Stop. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I know that was powerful. Uh, encouraging, equipping, and empowering women. Uh, it's such a, a great topic. Uh, we are recording this show October 1st, and it is the beginning of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It is also the beginning of Domestic Violence Month, and Debrika Handy is here. She wrote this book. It's called The Little Girl Scorn. Welcome to the show, Debrika. Thank you, thank you. And tell me where this comes from. Well, the book comes from my life personally, how I became a little girl scorned, and how I became the victim of not one, but two domestic violence relationships. It also gives how I grew closer to God, because at the end of the day, without me getting that relationship with God, I don't think I would have been able to survive on my own. And what people don't realize is that sometimes in these domestic relationships, we are alone. We feel alone. We don't come out because of judgment. We don't want nobody to judge us. We feel ashamed. And at the end of the day, I don't think we should be ashamed because we all have a story. All our lives are going to be different. We're not going to all live that same picture perfect life. And for me, I wanted little girls in my situation to know that just because you grow up, in a single parent home does not mean that your life has to be different from everyone else. I want them to know that they don't have to go out there looking for love in all the wrong places, just as I did. I want to be the one to give little girls the platform to speak up and speak out. Let your parents know how you're feeling, whether that's a biological mom, biological dad, stepdad, biological mom, stepdad, whatever it might be. We have blended families this mm -hmm. day, so you yes. never... You know, you never know, but the, the message is to talk to somebody. Exactly. And tell somebody something. Now, you were a little girl who, uh, because of your biological father not being in your life, felt that you weren't loved? Or no, it's not to say that I wasn't loved, because I was loved. My stepdaddy gave me all the love a little girl could have wanted. But... It was something it missing. It was something missing. I guess it was because he wasn't my biological dad, and I knew that. I felt like my real dad, this is how I really feel about the situation. 
if my real dad had been around me, I probably would have never went into those two domestic relationships because I wouldn't have a reason to go out there looking for love. But then again, I can't really say, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't know what to expect. I don't know. I didn't know how my life was going to play out. But I do know is that little girls, we look to our fathers as our first true love. And mine wasn't there. I wanted answers and I didn't get those answers. I know that he has another family. I knew that he had a wife or children. And I know my dad is not a violent man. Him and his wife are still happily married today. And I'm glad, I'm blessed to say that I have both of, you know, my mom and my dad who are married. But still, some part of me felt like if I just wasn't good enough, like something was wrong with me because he didn't play a part in my life. And that's and what led to domestic. I want you to know, young lady, that you speak for so many little girls and big girls, and old women like me. But I, I want you to know that you speak for a lot of women in this world, in this country, in this community, right around us, who never knew their fathers, their biological fathers. Right. You know, so I can see now this is going to be a powerful women's conference. I know you're going to attack other topics, Rachel. Yes, uh, what what are some of the other topics uh, we can expect? Some of the topics you can expect are um, knowing that you're still on the mind of God despite everything. With the recent killings we've been having, the children, you know, just losing their lives senselessly, um, the police, you know, the, the, the things going on with the police and Victor White, all of that, you know, unity in the community. Everybody's going to be there just so that they can know that they're still on the heart and the mind of God. Because God says, I see you through all your tears. I was going to ask you, where did that title come from? <laughs> yes, ma'am. God says, I see you through every tear that you may cry, through every anger that you may feel, through that heartache and pain, through that, am I the one? Because even till today, yesterday I did an orientation with a young lady, not realizing that I'd get a phone call. And I got a phone call from somebody, and they said, are you ready? And I said, I'm ready. I said, but I'm still struggling. They said, but that's okay. Totally let go. And I said, you know what? God sees me. And that young lady went home and she put on Facebook that she never knew God would have sent an angel through <laughs> an orientation to tell her that God sees you. Mm. And so it's just going to be powerful, Miss Portia. Uh, men are welcome as well because our men are depreciating. Sooner or later, they may be extinct if we don't do something now. So men are welcome. The women are going to come, they're going to get equipped, they're going to get empowered, because if we don't stand, who's going to push the men out there? Somebody it's all about relationships, but more importantly, it's about that relationship with God. Yes. My pastor preached that uh, this past weekend, and his message was, I know him for myself. All right. I know him for myself. I yes. said, I'm going to have to play that song Saturday on the radio, but... Uh, You've got to know him for yourself. And yes. when I saw the topic, I see you, I'm reminded of a young lady. She said, Miss Portia, you know, uh, I don't even go to church anymore. She said, because all these so-called church people, uh, <laughs> I be seeing them doing all kinds of things when they're not in the church. And that's where I thought this came from. I honestly did. And I, I was reminded of that young lady. And uh, I said to her, you know what? You know, no matter what they're doing, you have to make it personal. You know, this has to be a personal thing right? with you and God, no matter what nobody doing around you. Yes, but uh, she was young, and she just really shocked me. She said, I don't go to none of them churches because uh, I see them people uh, at the casino. She said, I see some of them at the club, and then on Sunday they sitting there rocking. Uh, with the Bible and everything. <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons why we're having it at the Progressive Community Center, because I wanted to reach everybody. Okay. And there are some people like that young lady that will not set foot in the church. Not. So if I can't reach everybody in a church, I'm going outside of those four walls. That's and we're right. We're reach them where we can find them. Rachel sisters, it's going to be Kingdom Ladies Night. I like that. Saturday, October tenth. From 6 until 10 p.m., it's a free event, and you can come out and 
enjoy a night of encouraging, equipping, and empowering messages, praise dances. Uh, this young lady, Debrika Handy, is going to expound on her book, A Little Girl Scorn. Uh, she's a survivor, survivor of battery and abuse. And I did this piece, uh, I, told, I was telling you about it. It's called, Please Don't Hit Me. God made you stronger than me. And I would, I would tell that to my abuser. I, I tell him, you already know you could beat me up. Right. God made you stronger than me. So for every man that hath an ear, let him hear. Please, don't hit a woman. God made you stronger than them. But uh, Rachel's sisters and my friend, uh, Yoka Bed, is, uh, they're going to be, uh, she's the overseer of this event. And if somebody is just interested in hearing what we have to say today, how do they reach you? They can reach me either by email at rachelsisters2015 at gmail.com, which is R-A-C-H-E-L-S-I-S-T-E-R-S. 2015 at, at gmail.com. At gmail? Or they can call us at 337-257-1547. Do you have to register, or would you like to invite churches to bring their women? All churches are welcome, all women's group, men's group, anybody that can come out and support, we love them. All right, and Debrika, I want to ask you uh, a little bit more about the book. Uh, you said... I couldn't believe when you said that uh, some of the abuse and battery in your life started when you were only 14 years old. Yes, ma'am. 14? 14. And you didn't tell mom, dad, nobody? No. Why? Honestly, because I know the kind of family I have. And in my heart, I'm not a violent person. So by me going to them and telling them, I already know what was going to be the outcome. And not to mention, I was pregnant. I had my first child when I was 15. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want my child to grow up in a home like how I grew up. So I was trying to fix Do you that. have a daughter? I have five daughters. Five daughters. Yes. What do you tell your girls? I'm teaching my girls to know that it's okay to be the outcast of the group. It's okay to be different. It's okay to grow up in a home with just one single parent and one biological parent. It's okay to be yourself because at the end of the day, your life matters. Wonderful. I'm proud of you. Thank wow. you. Wonderful. But a little girl scorn. Now, where can we get the book? You can purchase my book at um, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble's. Google Play, iTunes, and you can also go to my website, which is a littlegirlscorn.com. And download it? Google Play. You can okay. download it. Google Play and iTunes, you can download it. All right. And it uh, comes from a little girl who longed for love all of her life, especially for the love of her biological dad, which she felt she never received because he was never around. She felt she was not good enough for him to love her, and even though she had a stepdad who was there for her, no matter the situation, she still felt like that wasn't enough. She wanted answers, and she did not get the answers from her dad that she wanted. Have you told your dad that? Yeah. And what? I, I, we talked. I recently got closure with my dad. We talked over the really? phone. Really? And, and what did he say? I can say this. It's... Some people used to say it's two sides to every story, but I say it's three sides to every story. It's your mom's side, your dad's side, and the truth. Okay. And I got both sides. And my response that I got from my dad gave me that closure that I wanted. All I wanted him to, to ever say do. or ever do was just to tell me he was proud of me no matter what I went through. Mm -hmm. And I got that. Yeah. Wonderful. So I'm at peace with that. Wonderful. Ladies, can't you tell it's going to be powerful? Kingdom Ladies Night, Saturday, October 10th. The I-C-U, the word C, S-E-E-U, Women's Conference. Rachel's sisters, and we are here 
with two of the ladies that will be there that night. It's going on at the Progressive Community Center, which is located on Galleon Street, right next to Progressive Baptist Church. It's free. It's open to the public. Are you going to dance that night, Rachel? No, ma'am. I'm <laughs> no? not going to dance, but another sister in Christ will. Wonderful. Lots and lots of topics. We've been talking a little bit about domestic violence. We've got uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we always like to encourage when we're on the air for you ladies to get tested, get tested early. Uh, prevention, early prevention, early detection uh, is the best thing. And uh, we want you to get tested early, have that mammogram. If you can't afford it, there are several resources where you can go in the community and they'll give you a free mammogram if you don't have insurance. And I hear that from a lot of women who don't have insurance, but you can go and get your free mammograms. Uh, you can know you can find a place, get a referral. But uh, there are so many women's issues. We were talking a little bit about the violence going on in the community. And uh, there are many, many sad mothers uh, because of this senseless, senseless gun violence mm -hmm. going on in the community. And uh, I am there too. I'm, I'm a mother who uh, is still looking for closure uh, from some things. And I am not unlike many, many mothers across the country in this community. You know, there are many, many like me, many who yeah. were in abusive situations in their lives. Wow. Many who have lost a son yeah. to gun violence, you know, a child to gun violence and still no closure, you know. So, um, you know, we have some things that uh, we have shared and we have some things where we have crossed together and come together with. And it, it takes somebody yeah. to walk in walk your shoes, shoes. Yes, to yes. know what you're going through, yes. you know. Uh, can't. Can't nobody tell it like me. That's what I like That's to right. say. Like Can't nobody right. tell it like me. And but for the grace of God, I mm -hmm. still have my mind and I, I have this peace about around that surrounds me, wow. uh, about my child, and it, it it's just a peace, uh, the solace of knowing that one day, someday, yes. I'm going to know the story. And uh, that's what gives me peace. Yes. Uh, I'm going to know the story one of these days. Wow. Rachel Sisters, Kingdom Ladies Night, you be there. We want to invite you there, and uh, we're going to have a great time. Yours truly will be there in the house, and we'll serve as your mistress of ceremony for that evening. So we're looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful time in God to, to break some things off uh, what yes. people are going through. Uh, to break some chains uh, yes. in that place that night. And, and, and you, you never know what a person's going through. That's right. Or when you look at a person, you know, you never know what they have gone through. That's right. You know, uh, you can look at me or hear me and think all is well, mm -hmm. you know, but you never, never know. In cases of domestic violence, I do want to urge victims of domestic violence to pick up the phone and call somebody or just share that with somebody. Sometimes it's like you say, it's shameful. It's shameful. That you stay with a man over and over again who is abusing you. And a lot of women have different reasons for staying. Right. right. A lot start with the kids. I'm staying yeah. for the kids, but you know. My message for that, what we think is best for our kids may not always be. Right. For our kids. Wonderful. And uh, another reason I've heard is because uh, I ain't got no money. Uh, this man takes care of me. they giving that man, they're looking for validation from that man. Your validation doesn't come from that man. That's right. It comes from God. Yeah. So you shouldn't say it's because of money because at the end of the day, God provides him with that money to provide for you. That's so you right. are capable of doing anything. That's right. All by myself. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> a little girl scorn. Debrika Handy is here, and uh, Miss Rachel Leopold is here. Ladies, uh, I know you want to do some more invitations, and this all started uh, one night at a house. At a house. 
house. At a house. Yes. And uh, you just kept getting together over and over yes, again. And it seems that now uh, everybody's doing good, doing well. Yes, Started yes. with five women. Yes. See the yes. power yes. of God? Yes. That is wonderful. So I know you have some special invitations you want to issue out. Yes, uh -huh. ma'am. Um, I'd like just to welcome everybody. Um, churches, women, men, young girls. Come listen to Ms. Debrika. Come hear her story. Come and share with Ms. Portia and us. And let's become a bigger group so that we can impact the world together. Because the stronger that we are together, the more powerful we are against the enemy with the grace of God. Amen, amen. and amen. And Debrika, I know you have some special people that... I have a lot of people. Even if you never went through domestic violence, you may never know you might be having a friend that's going through it and not afraid to come to you because they are afraid you're going to judge them. The only thing I have to say is just be that supportive friend. Do not judge that person because we may think it's easy, but it's always easier said than done. So just be that ear that that person needs, that shoulder to cry on, and do not, I constantly repeat, do not judge that individual. So Debrika, let me ask you this uh, on a final note. What did it take for you to leave this abuse? Well, I can't tell you that because I'm going to be giving it away. To, <laughs> oh. I'm going to be giving it away. Well, I just want to know what, what. in the book. Okay. All I'm going to say is Jesus did it. All I'm right. you at that. All right. Well, that's good. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm going to share with you what it took for me. Okay. I walked to a police station one day with a gun in my hand. And I said, officer, if you ever see me looking like this again, You'll arrest me for life. And that's what it took. And I got the courage to just get up and walk out. Wow. wow. I said, if you ever see me looking like this again in my life, I said, you're going to arrest me for life. I'm, I'm going to do a life sentence. And I had a gun in my hand. And I've never held a gun in my life. Wow. But that day. And I walked yes, to the police station in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Wow. Said, I will never. And it's so funny because I see that abuser. I saw him. And he said, he asked me the question, why'd you leave me? <laughs> and I said, well, it had been some years, but I said, you don't remember, boo? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> anyway, we're inviting you to come have a great time with us. Rachel Sisters presents Kingdom Ladies Night. There are all kinds of issues. Come out Saturday, October 10th, 6 to 10 p.m. free. And men, you are encouraged to attend as well. They may teach us something that night. Right. You know, and uh, we need some men in the house with us. Progressive uh, Baptist Church Community Center, 125 Galleon Street, free and open to the public. Give them your email again. I know they can reach out to you on Facebook. Yes, ma'am. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. You can reach out to us via email, rachelsisters2015 at gmail.com, or you can call us at 337-257-1547. All right. Thank you, ladies, uh, for being on the show with me today. Thank you so much uh, for coming. We're going to pray for a powerful and God-delivering event that day. So uh, we will see you uh, next time. Thank you for coming and sharing with Thanks us. Thank you for having, having us. All right. That's going to wrap it up uh, for us. And we'll be back again next time with another show, another guest, and something else. In the meantime, you be blessed. And bye-bye. Thank y'all. Finalize it. I was she was gonna make me give away the detail in the book.
I sure said I gotta ask. Like we had six minutes. But that wasn't just one. No, that was two different situations. I know. The first one was my thought was I'm young. I think I know what's love because you grow up. I grew up around violence. My aunties, their husbands, they all fought. You understand what I'm saying? And I, I watched didn't. this, and they all got back together and still together. So if I wasn't taught any better, I'm not gonna know any better. Yeah. And as I got older, I'm already accustomed to it. You know what I'm saying? So this guy got out of jail and he did what he said, but two years later, that I don't even know. Now that one was, ooh, that one was when I lost custody of my six children. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all. Thank you guys. Y'all did a good your job. Your mama here? Your mom, your mom, I saw your mom. All right. They was gonna call the man to uh, finalize the video. No, I'm a. Wait, they know how to finalize. Y'all know how to finalize it, huh? No, he said he was tripping, so he said he was gonna. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, go get Mr. Jacob. He said he was tripping. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you this: every every person that has it, mm -hmm. the reports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Girl, this is, I can't put it down. I can't Girl, I got to get me a copy. Bring yeah. me a copy. I told her to get one away for uh, our order. They should be here next week. And then week. I, have to get two, I have to get two, well, three, because yeah, one for me and one for each of my girls, because they never seen their dad. They saw their dad maybe three yeah. times. This girl, I've been holding her book for forever. I'm like, look, you going to come get that arm or draw a white out through there tomorrow? And I'm like, <laughs> nah. Are you going to be one?